architecture of a ride hailing service. Requirements Functional Request a trip Find drivers in proximity Location updates Technical Real-time updates Efficient driver rider matching Scaling Here are some of the messages that will be exchanged between the driver rider and the backend server. Driver sends location updates every few seconds accepts rejects trips offered to him sends trip status updates once a ride starts rider sends location updates when he comes online and sends trip request server sends trip offer trip details to the driver and sends information on nearby drivers and trip details to the rider these are some examples of messages exchanged between various entities at a high level we need to track driver location rider location trip progress match driver to a rider, calculate ETA, do billing, and so on. Here are some of the services that we would need. A location service to track and search locations, a trip tracker service to track trip progress, a dispatch service to find nearby driver for a rider, an ETA service to calculate ETA between two locations, a billing service to do the billing, a notification service to send messages to drivers and riders. Each of these services will be implemented as a microservice. Let's look at some interactions between the actors and various services. Driver sends location updates to the location service every few seconds. So the location service is aware about the coordinates of every driver. A rider sends trip request to the dispatch service which in turn calls the location service to find drivers that are in proximity of the rider. Once it has that information, trip is offered to a nearby driver. When accepted, trip begins. ETA service may be invoked to find expected time needed to complete the trip. Trip status updates are sent to trip tracker service every few seconds. When the trip ends, billing service gets the trip details like route etc. and calculates the amount to be charged. This information is sent to the rider and the driver via the notification service. This of course is a simplified flow to give you an idea of the message exchanges. Each of these services need to store data. So let's add databases here. The location service uses a location cache, for example, Redis. Trip trackers could store information in a NoSQL database like Cassandra, while driver and rider profile details could reside in a RDBMS like MySQL. You could use any other appropriate database of your choice here. We will look at these services and databases in more detail soon. So here's the complete architecture. A few additional services like WebSockets Gateway and a messaging service behind it have been added. Client to server communication would happen over WebSockets, which is a two-way real-time asynchronous communication protocol. Messaging server provides a layer of abstraction between the WebSockets Gateway and microservices. Notification service also uses WebSockets Gateway to send asynchronous messages over WebSockets to client applications. In addition, we have added a few analytics related services to the architecture. Same architecture using AWS services behind API gateway is SQS messaging service. Microservices are implemented as Lambda functions. These could also be implemented as containerized applications. Let's look at some important design aspects now. Location tracking. What does location tracking do? It tracks location of drivers and riders, finds drivers in proximity of the rider efficiently. But how does it do it? Here's a map of a city. Since driver app sends us location coordinates every few seconds, we know where each driver is on this map. Every driver is uniquely identified in a system with a driver ID. Now, if we want to search for drivers closest to a rider, we would have to scan the entire geographical area and examine every single driver. That is clearly not efficient. However, if we divide this geographical area into rectangles or hexagons, let's call them cells. We would know which drivers are in which cells. For example, cell 1 has drivers D1 and D2, cell 2 has driver D3 and so on. Therefore, it becomes easier to find drivers close to the rider. In this case, rider is in cell 8 and there is a driver D15 in the same cell. So driver D15 
is a potential match for a trip for this rider. However, we may want to cover adjacent cells too for various reasons like a driver in an adjacent cell might actually be closer to the rider and so on. So now we have a list of cells and drivers in them to select from and we can use various criteria to prioritize drivers for the trip. So this is how we narrow down our driver search efficiently. But how do we implement this technically? We could use a library like GeoHash or S2 Geometry for this purpose. These libraries divide the entire Earth's surface into various cells and every cell is given a unique ID. Cell size can be predetermined by us given a latitude, longitude. GeoHash library can map it as belonging to a particular cell. What's the primary difference between GeoHash and S2 library? GeoHash treats the surface it is mapping into cells as flat while S2 can factor in 3D nature of the surface, for example, spherical earth. GeoHash or S2 is just a library. We still need to store the location information somewhere. Essentially store list of cells and drivers in them in a real time fashion. An in-memory cache is ideal for storing this information for fast storage and retrieval. For example, a Redis cache, it stores data in key value pairs. If we think in terms of key value pairs, we could have cell ID as the key and list of drivers along with car type and free seats in them as the value. Additionally, we could store driver as a key and have cell ID as value. Having both cell ID and driver as separate keys allows us to look up information by either one of them. As long as a driver is within a cell, everything is straightforward. But what happens when a driver moves from one cell to another? How do we find out his previous cell so that he can be removed from that. There are a couple of ways to handle this. One way is that driver always sends previous and current location. Another way is we can look up driver's current cell first before proceeding with updates. There may be other ways to store and manage this information. However, this should give you a good idea of how to go about it. We cannot store all the cell driver location data on a single cache server Redis in our case. We must have a way of scaling horizontally by distributing data across many servers. If you treat a group of cells as a region, you can have cache servers by region. This allows you to distribute your location data across cache servers by region and therefore scale horizontally. To understand this better, let's look at the driver location update flow. Driver sends location information that is latitude and longitude to the server. The server converts latitude and longitude to cell ID using GeoHash and then looks up region ID based on cell ID and finally updates region cache server. Now let's look at rider trip request flow. Rider sends trip request from a location that is latitude and longitude. Server converts the location to a cell ID using GeoHash and then looks up region ID based on cell ID. And finally, it queries region cache server for drivers in those cells. So this is how we do driver to rider matching efficiently. Trip database stores trip status updates. This could be a NoSQL database like Cassandra. Here's what the trips table in Cassandra may look like. If you look at rows with trip ID T77, you will notice that updates are received every 5 seconds. Driver D15 is driving and rider R91 is the passenger. Location or status updates may change with every update. You could structure this information differently. For example, as a JSON document if you are using a database that supports that. Assuming Cassandra database is used, in order to scale, you will have a sharded setup. It's important to choose the partition key carefully. For example, it could be trip ID. How do you calculate ETA between two locations? You could use Google Maps distance metrics API. It takes to and from locations as main inputs and returns time needed to travel between them. This can factor in traffic conditions and so on. Alternately, you could use any other similar service. So that brings us to the end of our discussion. This should give you a good idea of how to architect a ride hailing service.